Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Equipment Experts. Look, if you're tired of searching across multiple sites for used equipment or trucks, check out equipmentexperts.com. What's going on everyone? I'm Wayne and you're watching Equipment World. Welcome into another episode of The Dirt, the video podcast that brings you interviews and discussion on the latest heavy equipment, trucks, and construction industry trends. On this episode of The Dirt, we're going to be discussing a key market entry for Kubota. Earlier this year at Con Expo, the company made some serious waves with the introduction of its first ever mini skid steer, or stand on track loader as Kubota is calling it, and that is the SCL1000. By the way, if you haven't seen our in-depth overview of the Kubota SCL1000, be sure to check that video out. You can see it at the link in the description below or in the card above me. And be sure to subscribe to the channel right now so that you don't miss any of our other videos in the future. Now, the SCL1000 was by far one of the most popular product launches at Con Expo 2020. And the mini skid steer segment of machines is growing in popularity as well. So I've asked Tim Bolds, the product manager for Kubota's entire construction equipment lineup, to join us today on The Dirt to discuss this growing segment of mini skid steers and what makes the SCL1000 a unique mini skid steer. Hey Tim, thanks so much for hanging out today, man. How are you? I'm doing fine, Wayne. How about yourself? Awesome. Well, hey Tim, uh, before we get into the specifics of the SCL1000, I, I do wanna talk a bit about the mini skid steer slash uh, stand on track loader slash uh, compact utility loader segment. Uh, in general. This is Kubota's very first entry into this market, uh, and the market is obviously kind of experiencing a lot of growth right now, but but how does Kubota view this market? Um, clearly, you guys see some potential there, or else you wouldn't have introduced this machine in the first place, but how do you view this machine type and its role in your overall lineup going forward? So this machine um, and this market segment is one that we've looked at uh, when we do our market research with our dealers and customers. It's one actually, this market segment is actually one that they uh, request that we pursue. And um, it gives us another option to yet put another solution into the construction equipment realm and expand our product line. Um, it's going to be able to uh, help some of our existing customers, uh, you know, with, with projects that are small or too small for some of their existing Kubota machines to get into. So it's gonna allow that uh, helping hand for them. And it's also gonna be able to attract maybe some new customers for us. All right, so uh, in the process of asking that first question, uh, I was actually reminded of something. Um, now, I know that you guys call the SCL1000 a stand-on track loader, uh, and, and despite the uniform kind of rising popularity that these machines are experiencing right now, there, there seems to be uh, very little agreement on exactly what to call them among manufacturers or, or customers for that matter. So anecdotally, uh, whenever I've asked online readers and viewers what they call it, they usually say mini skid steer. So uh, what's your take on what to call these things? And, and what have you heard personally as you've been uh, developing this machine? Uh, there's a lot of terms out there and I've heard mini skid steers. Um, the way I believe that's reported in, in uh, AEM is compact utility loaders. And that's that's uh, how they're reported, but everybody calls them mini skid steers as well. We and we kind of do our uh, you know our large compact track loaders, our our um, our SVL series. This one we we kind of made the acronym the Stand On Compact Loader uh, as as the acronym for SCL one thousand series that we offer. So. Um, it's it is a mini skid steer basically that you stand on so yeah i actually uh you know i I, th I think everyone i think that the touch point for a lot of people when they see these things probably the first thing that they kind of think of uh is probably like a stand on mower uh and stand on mower that has pretty much become the vernacular around you know <laughs> mowers of that type so i i personally really like the stand on skid steer stand on track loader I personally kind of like that terminology. Uh, so, so maybe, you know, maybe with you guys, that'll kind of take off uh, with, with you calling it that and maybe kind of spread a little bit more throughout the customer base. But but mini skid steer for, for right now definitely seems uh, to be in the lead in terms of what exactly to call these things. Uh, but as, as a follow up, uh, now that we've followed up the first question, here's another follow up to it. Uh, could you talk a little bit about why Kubota is entering this market now 
as opposed to earlier. Uh, did you guys have kind of a wait and see approach where you kind of were you were monitoring this market and just kind of waiting for the right moment? What, what was kind of holding you guys back from putting a machine of this type into the market? Um, you know, if, if you look at our other product launches in the past throughout the Kubota history, um, there's there's been other market segments that we've entered into uh, after, after it's been well established. But one of the things that we do in our research and development process is we communicate with our dealers and customers a lot. Uh, we, we talk to them constantly. We, we survey them. We ask them what they need to be more productive, more efficient, what type of new products they want. And, and since this was on one of our, our um, you know, wish lists from the, the dealers and customers, it, it helps us to prioritize that, that strategy. And, you know, we keep tabs on what the market looks like. And, and if it looks like it's going to move towards that growth uh, factor, then, then we decide to turn some of our energies, our internal energies of engineering into focusing on this product. And that's exactly what we did is, is uh, it's, it's just an expansion of our product line and, and offering to the customers to help them out. Okay, so moving on to the specifics of this new machine, you guys chose to start with a machine that has a thousand pounds of rated operating capacity. Could you discuss why Kubota chose that specific ROC uh, for this entry machine? Um, again, again, going back to that uh, research, basically as we went out and talked to customers and dealers, you know, we heard a lot of things of, I, I wish my machine could pick up a little bit more weight, do a little bit more, be able to get into some different areas. Uh, and, and still be able to get into backyards. So um, it, it appeared as though the market was growing. And at that time, you know, one of the competitors had a 1,500 pound, and now there's all the way up to a 3,000 pound size machine. So, um, you know, we, we kind of felt that the market was going to grow and, and maybe we're utilizing some of our history with track loaders and skid steers is that, you know, some of the guys that started out small and a small machine have grown and they're getting into a larger, but uh, we believe that it's going to move a little bit up in size in the ROC class. Yeah, and uh, you, you just mentioned this, that the, the fact that there are smaller ROCs on the market than the SCL 1000, uh, and, and now larger ones are here that go up to 3,000 pounds, and, and you mentioned that you see the industry kind of continuing to move toward uh, larger mini skid steers or stand-on track loaders. Uh, but on the other hand, with the SCL 1000, a big focus for you guys in the development of this machine was ensuring that it had a high degree of maneuverability in terms of being able to still get into tight spaces. So, you know, what is your opinion on that trend that you're seeing of the machine getting larger. Is that a place that Kubota is looking to go or is the feeling kind of uh, that that at the that you reach a certain point or you cross a certain line in terms of mini skids to your size that maybe size and price where you would be better off uh, serve with just getting into a compact track loader at that point? Um, it's a good question. We, we want to get this machine out and get it in the hands of people. We'll do some more research, but but basically, there there is a point. I mean, we offer skid steers and track loaders that that range from 1,950 pounds ROC all the way up to over 3,000. And you know, there there comes a point that whenever the price point of a larger mini skid steer, for the lack of a better term, um, when you're getting into the same cost as a skid steer or a small track loader where you can be inside a cab and be protected from the elements uh, and be more comfortable as an operator. So there is a point to where I don't, uh, we don't see, you know, we, we're already offering something at that level. So I, I think there would be a cap on what we would go as far as if we do decide to go larger with the machine. Uh, at this point, we haven't determined where that would be, but um, I think there is a cap to it. Now, something you just said there about the comfort of being inside of the cab kind of reminds me of, uh, you, you know, the, the appeal 
uh, to stand on machines such as stand on mowers, uh, these mini skid steers that we're talking about. Uh, obviously, you know, you have maneuverability, uh, the ability to get into tight spaces while still being able to do a lot of the things that you can do with a much larger skid steer or CTL. But, you know, another big appeal to these machines is the convenience of just being able to hop on and hop off of them. Uh, if you're doing a job where you need to get in and out of the cab a lot, you know, folks in landscaping, uh, hardscaping, maybe uh, smaller scale type construction jobs who are just going back and forth between whatever uh, they're they're working on and the machine itself. Obviously, this stand on type of machine and its uh, unique design, its accessibility, you know, those design elements become a big priority for those customers in particular. Um, how much of that are you guys seeing in terms of that being a big priority for your customers specifically? Uh, or, or what are you hearing from your customers and dealers uh, uh, in relation to that aspect of being able to quickly hop on and hop off a machine with this type of power and capability? I think when you get to a smaller machine, it is much more uh, of a priority. And it, it really depends on the environment you're in and what you're doing. You know, a lot of the, the customers that use these, the landscape customers or the homeowners that rent them from rental houses, um, yes, they, they're they constantly getting on and off of them. And that's, that's one of the, the great aspects about these machines is the, um, the ability to do that. And, but whenever you get up into those larger areas, are you really going to be able to get whatever you're trying to carry um, you know, that's 2,000, 3,000 pounds, you know, through a backyard gate or, you know, you're not going through a, a, a gate, you're going through taking a panel out and, and going in there. Um, but, um, but yes, we, we, that's one of the things that, that we heard as far as research is that it is a very nice convenience to be able to jump on and off of them throughout the day without having to climb out of a cab. Um, I just think there's a, a transitional point there from, uh, from what you're doing and it, and it could, it could vary. I mean, you could be in a, a circumstance where you're in like a landscape yard where what you're doing is loading someone's truck. They come in and they, they buy a pallet of, you know, sod or half pallet of sod and you're taking this machine and you're just loading it for a quick, you know, instance. Uh, and then you're you're back out of it and waiting on the next customer or you're going on to do something else, you know, in that landscape yard. All right. So, Tim, we mentioned before, you know, the huge amount of growth of this machine has seen in the last five years or so. I mean, specifically, uh, sales of this machine have more than doubled. So with this first entry, how did Kubota strive to differentiate this model from the competition? Part of it is we wanted to solve some problems that we kind of heard from customers that when we surveyed them on the, and, and one of them was that they wanted to be able to lift more and do, do more with the machine and still be able to fit in some of those tight areas. So um, the, the overall narrow, the narrowness of the machine, the SEL 1000's overall width, with a wide track is 36 inches wide. There's no one else out there that offers a wide track at that narrow of a, of a um, with we also in, one of the other things that kind of stands us apart is the fact that our Kubota engine that's in there that's the uh, other manufacturers have under 25 horsepower like us but no one has a turbo on their diesel engine so ours is a turbo charged uh, D902 Kubota engine that's in there uh, it's it is a new engine for Kubota the 902 is not a new engine, but the turbo on there uh, makes it kind of new. But, uh, you know, we're known for our compact diesel engines uh, throughout the world. Um, one of the other things that, you know, it's not something that's uh, our loader, our vertical lift loader. If you look at our skid steers and our track loaders, uh, we basically scaled that down. <laughs> To, to make this little machine. So our, uh, our vertical lift gives us a 84.7 inch, you know, hinge pin height, which is one of the highest out there for this size machine. Um, they, you know, customers wanted to, to dump in a roll off dumpster uh, and this allows them to get the height and 
with that vertical loader, it gives them the reach um, to be able to do that. And, um, you know, I guess um, one of the other key features two other key features, I guess, we'll, that we'll chime in on here and then we'll go on. But uh, one is the, the uh, undercarriage. The, the undercarriage is a purpose built, meaning that it's welded to main chassis. It's not a bolt-on track design. So that's kind of unique to these uh, machines. And then, you know, one of the other things is these machines are small and theft is kind of high on them. So uh, one thing that they were asking for was a keyless start system. So we've got a dash in our machine that's a, a five inch LC, uh, color LCD dash that provides a uh, passcode start system on this machine, which is unique to us as well. Yeah, so you alluded to this in your previous comment there, basically being able to scale down the technology of your current uh, compact track loaders uh, in developing this machine. How big of an advantage is that for you guys? Um, I, I mean, you know, you guys are basically one of two players in this market that have a skid steer or a compact track loader lineup uh, with that ability and that experience to be able to scale that down. So, you know, in terms of a market entry, you guys are kind of on the tail end of entering the market. So you're playing catch up in a sense, but how big of a, uh, a starting block lead in this kind of uh, playing catch up in this, uh, in, in this race do you kind of get with that CTL experience? I, I think it does give us a little bit of an advantage. Uh, we've, we've been in that you know, full size realm. It also, like I said earlier, or kind of alluded to it earlier, is that you know, customers that have our equipment already may may have a competitive unit that is you know that's out there and now they can own a Kubota unit you know and just have their Kubota fleet so um you know i think i think there's going to be some you know synergies there with with customers saying hey we know it's Kubota we know it's good you know we know it's going to be durable um they're, they're, it's going to be uh, yeah i'll buy it type of attitude, I think, so. And, and, you know, to that point, I know that, you know, just kind of looking at search terms and everything else that, that I do personally on a daily basis from my job and kind of keeping track of not just mini skid steers, obviously, uh, but but also what people are specifically looking for in terms of those machines. Uh, the SCL 1000 already, in terms of just kind of uh, search engine interest, uh, in terms of the buzz that we saw around it at Con Expo, there's just a lot of excitement there. And I, I know on our website in particular, there's been a lot of traffic, a lot of interest to the introduction of this specific machine earlier in this year so are you guys kind of seeing some of that early excitement obviously there was some pinup demand on your side of things but you know what are you hearing from customers in terms of early feedback early response to seeing this machine for the first time oh yeah they're uh on a almost daily basis i think our our uh, call centers get a phone call saying hey when is it gonna when is it gonna be at a dealer uh, and, and yes, there is, there is that pent up demand, uh, for it, I believe. And that's kind of the reason why we kind of, um, focused on it now to get it done and to get it, uh, out to the, the market is, uh, we had been hearing it from our dealers for a while and, and we just, you know, whenever you, you talk to your customers and dealers and they tell you what they want, you, you, you got to step back and say, okay, well, what do you want first? <laughs> so, and, and, uh, and that this was just the right time for us to go for forward with it. And, um, yeah, it's, we've, we've had a lot of good, uh, publicity and a lot of good word of mouth on it already. So we're looking forward to it. We're excited. Well, yeah, and, and definitely beyond, you know, there, there, there being this kind of pinup demand for this machine type in particular, it's a great kind of entry level type machine to kind of, you know, draw people in or like you said earlier, kind of fill in a missing piece to what would normally be an all Kubota fleet to really, you know, lock a lot of those customers in to a higher degree. Uh, but something that you said earlier when kind of talking about the development of this machine kind of reminded me of a question that I had for you in terms of scaling down from uh, from larger uh, compact track loaders. 
Uh, what in your mind are the primary differences? Now, if, if you've got somebody who's used to operating a skid steer or a compact track loader and they're very comfortable operating those machines, what really are the primary differences in terms of feel or what you might have to adapt to when you hop on one of these things and get going and kind of your, uh, you know, you know, your normal every day is going to be spent in one of those other machines? You know, apart from, you know, obviously not being in a cab, apart from being in a standing position, what are the other kind of differences in terms of feel and the way that these things operate? For instance, our, our larger machines are pilot operated and they're ISO uh, designed. So your left hand controls movement of the machine and your right hand controls movement of the loader. So uh, there's there's similarity there with our machine as the right hand, the, the, it is a uh, pilot operated hydraulic control system. Uh, our right hand controls the joystick or, or controls the loader functions and then the, the left hand controls the movement of the, the machine. Now, it is a little bit different. It's not just a joystick that they're gonna hold on with their hands and operate. The left hand joystick on this machine is a T-handle, so they push it forward or reverse, and then they twist it as they are doing that to steer one way or the other, going forward and reverse. So it, it, it operates slightly different, but a lot of people that that get off of you know the uh, competitions piece of equipment, or if they've got one of our track loaders or skid steers that uh, that is ISO uh, style of control, that it doesn't take very long for them to pick it up. It's kind of natural. The the thing, in my opinion, the thing to kind of get used to is you're standing on your feet and the machine's moving, and now you're balancing yourself. You know. So as you're going over the terrain versus just sitting in a seat riding long. So uh, getting back to the specifics of this machine, um, I think a really interesting element of it is that it has a very capable operating capacity of 1,000 pounds uh, while also having a very low ground pressure of 4 PSI. And in fact, when you look at the rest of the market, um, it's really, really tough to find anything with this level of capability with that low of ground pressure. Uh, could you talk a little bit about, you know, what went into that decision in terms of making sure you had that combination of, of uh, you know, high enough operating capacity, low enough ground pressure, um, and, and yeah, just kind of like the uh, being able to supply a machine of this width while also retaining that low ground pressure? Customer types that, that uh, really use this machine a lot are landscape, you know, professionals, the, co the contractors. Um, there are rental yards uh, that, that own them and rent them to homeowners, the, the do-it-yourselfers over the weekend. And then there are um, actually, you know, tree service people as well that, that like to utilize these machines, especially if they have to go into someone's backyard and maintain trees, cut some limbs out and take that material out of the, out of the backyard. So it, it our, one, you know, one of the key design concepts of this is that 36 inch machine with a wide track on it. So we can get the lightest footprint at, you know, our, I, I believe our, four, our uh, footprint is four PSI and which is pretty low for that size of machine. And uh, tracks are 9.8 inches wide. And, and to do that, you know, we had to start with the design idea that this is this is what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to get in through most standard backyard gates. Some are larger than that, but a lot of them are, you know, a 36 inch door that has about a 38 inch gap between the posts. So we're able to sneak in there with this machine and be able to get um, into those backyards and, and either transport material back and forth. You know, the, even people that do, um, well, it would be land, you know, hardscapes. You know, if they put, if they're putting in like a patio in the back, it's, they can go in there do the ground prep work with this thing. And then they can go back and forth and carry the, the blocks to lay, or, you know, the bricks to lay. So uh, it was very, you know, that, those customer types, those job types, are, are kind of things that went into this and into the design and, and development of it and, um, and what we came out with. 
Now, you mentioned the undercarriage earlier, Tim, but but I'd like for you to go a little bit more in depth on it uh, and talk about how it impacts the the kind of overall feel of this machine. Because, you know, as you said just a little bit ago, you know, a major difference between this machine and a skid steer or a compact track loader is going to be balance, it is going to be steadiness and firmness on your feet while you operate. So go ahead and talk a little bit about the importance of the undercarriage design with that consideration. The undercarriage itself, if, you, if you're standing beside the machine and look at it, and then look at our full-size compact track loaders, uh, you know, the SVL series that we have, it, we, we took that design and basically shrunk it down. So we're taking a proven, durable, heavy-duty undercarriage um, that we don't have to worry about bolts loosening up or anything like that. Uh, it's welded to the frame. If you want to look at um, the, the, the tension system on the track, is the same as our larger sis, our larger machines just kind of shrunk down. It's a grease tension, so we, we don't require a tool to tighten or loosen the tracks up. It's it's a grease system. Um, the the front rollers or the front idler in the track system is a dual flange design, so uh, that's doing a couple things for you. Whenever you go to uh, pick up a load with it with pallet forks, which is one of the popular attachments for these machines. Um, when you pick up that heavy load in the front, some of the machine's weight is transferred to the front, and and then you're picking up the weight as well on the front. So all that weight is coming down kind of on those front rollers. And instead of having a single flange roller right in the middle of the track, we have a dual flange, which spreads that weight out over the track it helps extend the life of the track because you're not putting all the pressure right in the middle of it. And it gives you a little bit better stability uh, because you're, you've got a little bit wider footprint uh, as you're driving around on. So if you go back behind there, right behind there between the front dual flange roller and the single flange rear roller are four to five, I think it's four, rollers, the track rollers, those rollers are permanently sealed with, with oil in them. So again, it's less maintenance, more, more durability. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something that we've taken from the larger system and, and, and moved it down. And then what go, the track frame that goes up and over those rollers is um, angled. And so it sheds debris which also helps with track life and helps to keep from detracking. Um, you know, in whenever you're out on the job site, it keeps all the debris kind of shedding away from it. Uh, and then that rear single flange roller, that that is actually tied to that grease tension. So whenever you tension the tracks, that's what's moving. But the reason we put a single flange roller in the back is if you think about moving around the job site and being able to turn and twist and move, it's very nimble on that single point, and you're not you're not placing a ton of weight on that single point anyway. Whenever you're you're, you're turning, so it it the the overall design of it um, is just shrunk down version of the SVL, but it's with with uh, the same concepts as we have in the larger one. You know, less less uh, less um, service work that you have to do, but it, it, um, you know, you still got to check the tension of the tracks, but it's heavy duty, it's durable, and it's going to be reliable for the customer. Now, talking about that track tensioning and some of the other considerations that, that you were mentioning, I, I think it's a good point to kind of shift over to the maintenance side of this thing. So obviously ground access on any type of, you know, smaller or compact machine is not going to be a huge deal. But what are some of the major kind of maintenance considerations and, and design points that, that you guys were really focused on with this machine type? So just as you said, Wayne, uh, these things are very compact. There's a lot of hoses, a lot of uh, you know, you got your engine in there, hydraulic parts and everything. So what we did in the design of this thing was when you raise the hood in the front, we basically got your hydraulic oil filter, your fuel filter, 
um, with the water separator bowl. Um, all in your air filter is all under the hood, all up and easy to access from standing outside the machine. The only one that we have to access um, through, and, and we have an access port on the right hand side of the machine if you were standing on it. So over on the right hand side, you take a plate off and you reach back in there for the filter for the engine. So they, they thought a lot about being able to service this machine fairly easily and how we would do that. So, uh, you know, your, your fuel, your diesel fuel tank and your hydraulic oil tank are all under that hood. So when you open the hood, you've got 95% of everything you need to do right there in front of you, easily accessible. And, you know, the, it, I believe the engine change time is 500 hours. So once every 500 hours, you're going in there to change the engine filter. Now, Tim, so we've we've hit on most of the major points with this machine, the specs, the design considerations. Uh, but, you know, it, it's got to be really interesting and, and exciting to kind of be a part of the development or research of a first machine of its kind at a company like Kubota uh, to be part of the development and introduction of an entry uh, and a market entry machine. So tell us what that experience was like for you personally. It was a, a great experience, Wayne. Uh, very fun very exciting um you know it, it makes it it makes it fun to come to work every day whenever you get to work with this type of equipment and and being part of the research and development of the machine with our engineers uh from the very first time that we went out and, and really started to hone in on this on a you know with paper cert you know we go out we talk to the dealers and the customers and we write down all their comments we bring that back and, and we talk through with the engineers of this is, this is what, and, and the engineers actually go out on the survey with us. So there, there's sales and marketing and engineering, they all go out and we come back and we talk about everything that we've heard and we we're able to just sit there and say, okay, well, this is what we would like. And our engineers sit down and they, they come back and we're just awestruck at their, engineering ability to, to, to bring this thing out and to show us what it's going to look like. And, and it's, and it's a great learning experience. You get to meet new customers, new, new people. Um, gives us, it gives us an opportunity to get out there and, and find out what, what our customers or potential customers want. And, um, and it's, and it's, it's a great experience because we're, we're working with, um, you know, our, our engineers. And I, I don't know if this is one point that I don't know if you know or not. I know we mentioned it um, at uh, Con Expo, but this was a co collaborative event uh, with Land Pride um, up in Kansas. That's, you know, Kubota bought um, Great Plains and Land Pride's part of that. So, but it's, it's, it's still a com uh, collaborative event between Land Pride Engineering and and our engineering, uh, but uh, the Land Pride guys are are actually the ones that that did it most of the engineering and 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 driving on it, and the, and that's where it's going to be produced is up there as well. So it, it was an excellent experience. Awesome. Well, hey, hey, Tim, thank you so much again. Uh, that's all the time uh, that we've got today. But thank you again for, for joining us today. Uh, this is just such an interesting machine. There's clearly a lot of, of interest in it. Um, so I, I hope that, you know, we've 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 done our job in, in terms of uh, trying to answer as many uh, questions uh, that folks might have out there. Uh, but congratulations on on getting the SCL 1000 into the market. Uh, and, but, but before we go, uh, when can we expect to see the SCL 1000 hit the market uh, if you guys have a, a date yet? Uh, it's going to be later this fall. We don't have an exact date on it, but uh, it, it should be out uh, in the next couple of months, I would think. So Cool. Well, look, we're, we're definitely looking forward to it. Uh, I know everyone else is. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, take it easy. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. Look forward to talking to you soon. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for us today on this episode of The Dirt and our discussion of the upcoming Kubota SCL 
1000. Let us know what you think of the machine in the comments below. And also let us know if you have any questions for Tim or Kubota that you'd like us to pass along. And if you like this video and found it useful in your next machine purchase or rental, do us a favor and hit the like button below. It really does help our channel out. And if you want more videos and more coverage on the latest construction equipment, visit our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, subscribe to our daily newsletter. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel here and turn on notifications. Hit the bell so you're receiving up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We always appreciate your time and we will see you next time.